Since 2015, here at the Met Office, we've been naming storms in partnership with Met Aaron. Storms are areas of low pressure that bring damaging conditions, disruptive weather to parts of the UK and or the Republic of Ireland. Why? Well, simply to raise awareness. Awareness of our weather warnings and of that severe weather that's on the way. By raising awareness, we prompt more people to take action to protect themselves and their property. And did you know that naming storms isn't actually anything new? The practice of using names to help identify severe weather can be traced back over the years. For example, in the 16th century, tropical cyclones in the Caribbean were often named after the saint of the day. More recently, the National Hurricane Centre in the 1950s started using names to identify tropical cyclones and in the 1970s started using the male and female names to identify storms in the Atlantic Basin. And that is the practice we use today here at the Met Office. In a recent YouGov survey, almost four out of five of those questioned found giving storms a name useful to make them aware that the storm may have greater impacts than normal with almost two-thirds agreeing storm naming was useful to let them know to take action and prepare for the potential impacts of the severe weather. By providing an authoritative naming system, we are able to give a consistent message to the public. Our partners and the emergency services have reported that by naming storms, they are able to better communicate the risks of severe weather. It's right here in the operations centre, the very heartbeat of the Met Office, that storms are given a name. We work very closely with Met Aaron, and when we see potentially disruptive weather on the way, it's the meteorologists in this room speaking to their counterparts in Dublin that make that call and decide whether to name a storm given the likely weather and, crucially, the impacts it could bring. But who chooses those names? When we first launched Name Our Storms back in 2015, the Met Office and Met Erin asked the British and Irish public to send in their suggestions for storm names, and we received over 10,000 suggestions. Many of these were more familiar names, but we also received some unusual suggestions, such as Paddington Bear and Voldemort. We try to choose the most popular names, so the ones that receive the most votes, but we also want to create a list that is reflective of the different nations, culture and diversity that make up Britain and Ireland, so we want to create a list that reflects this. The earlier we can name a storm, the greater the chance of raising more awareness. But meteorology is never straightforward, especially when the atmosphere is in a stormy, volatile mood. So sometimes storms are only named a day or so before they hit. But sometimes, using our expertise and powerful supercomputer, we know about them several days ahead. In some cases, storms are named even before they have formed. A named storm is really just an area of low pressure, and we see hundreds of low pressure systems close to the UK in any given year. So what makes one a named storm? Well, it's all about intensity, and the key factor is the strength of the wind. How damaging, how impactful are those winds likely to be? But we do also take into account precipitation. Heavy rain or heavy snowfall accompanying those strong winds might just make the difference between naming a storm or not. And it's not just about the numbers. How a storm impacts the UK is really affected by exactly where and exactly when it hits. A gust of wind of 70 miles an hour in the Northern Isles of Scotland at 3 a.m. in the morning is much less likely to have an impact than the same gust of wind in Birmingham, say, at Russia. And the time of year is important because of the trees being in leaf in October. It's much easier to bring down a branch with a gust of wind than it is, say, in February. The state of the ground is also key. If we've had a lot of heavy rain, if the ground is saturated, again, trees are more likely to come down. These judgment calls, particularly on the impacts of storms, are never going to be 100% accurate. It only takes one tree to fall on one train line to affect services. But what we do know for sure is that by naming these powerful storms, we make more people, more businesses, more aware of the potentially damaging and dangerous weather on the way. And that can save time, it can save money, and it can save lives.